friends one of our students who have taken guidance from us has cleared indian foreign service examination in upsc he wrote civil services as well as forest services and he has got 34th rank in the indian forest service examination today we will try to find out his strategy for prelims mains as well as interview because in prelims clearing ifs is very difficult if the cutoff for civil service is around 100 marks for general category in general the ifs cutoff will be beyond 120 means there is a margin of 20 marks between civil services and forest services and we are seeing in these days many candidates who have got rank in civil services if they are writing exam again they are failing in prelims under such conditions Ramana Kant Reddy has scored very good scores in prelims from last three years consecutively he is able to clear the IFS prelims exam also let us try to find out the strategy for the mains because in the mains civils has only one option but forest service has two options two different options which are not taken in the civils by most of the candidates for example his option for civil service is anthropology but forest service is geology and forestry so he has to prepare two different options separately for only for IFS and also interview the, the though interviews conducted by UPSC civils is 275 marks the kind of questioning is very different for IFS it's 300 marks and the questions are mostly technically oriented questions so Ramur Khan Reddy congratulations once again Thank you. Uh, friends he not only cracked IFS exam but the same this month only he has cleared APPS Andhra Pradesh Public Service Commission group one examination and uh, he selected as deputy collector one of the highest uh, posts in the group one APPSC. So congrats for your success in both the examinations. Thank you. So see Ramana Kant, uh, clearing prelims has, becoming a, has, has uh, become a main obstacle for in the civil services and forest services. And candidates though they have worked hard, read all the standard books, prepared very well in current affairs, they have very good knowledge, still they are failing in the prelims. Under these conditions, we have scored more than 120 consecutively in the last three years. So, what do you think is the main thing that helped you in scoring such high marks in the prelims examination consecutive? Yes, sir. Uh, as you mentioned, it is, it is becoming very, very difficult, sir, because uh, prelims, uh, rather than as a level of selection, I feel it is becoming more uh, as a level of elimination. So, students has to have, always keep this in mind, that knowledge alone will not be sufficient uh, to clear prelims. Because you, one should not, one may get eliminated if he only has knowledge. So he has to have knowledge plus something extra to remain uh, in the race and not get eliminated. So for me, when it comes to my particular case, uh, I got eliminated in my first attempt itself in the prelim stage. But over the years, years I have realized that that something extra which is needed for uh, uh, clearing prelims and staying in the race, I have learned it uh, through trial and error method. To be very honest, so. I could summarize uh, the required steps or things which help me in few pointers. The first thing and the most important thing, the guiding light has been the previous year questions in this uh, exam. So whenever I uh, study any particular uh, topic for prelims, be it polity, economy, environment, I always have the previous year questions subject wise that is the last 25-30 years questions of any given of any publications, solving them rigorously and uh, analyzing various other options which are given in this uh, in that particular question and uh, thinking why these questions are being asked when it, for example when it comes to science and technology one can find uh, some themes getting repeated again and again so that used to give me the confidence okay that these are the particular questions so in that way pvqs have been the guiding light for me and that is that has been the first most uh, important topic how many years how many years of pvqs uh, sir, uh, I used to solve, I used to buy the book which is available in the market. I have I have uh, uh, Disha publication for last 30, 35 years. I don't remember the exact year. So uh, that publication book I have, and I solved all the last uh, 30, 35 years which are available subject wise. Okay. After this, I also used to solve uh, the last 10 years papers in the exam board, like so, taking the 2011 paper to 2021 paper. Each year paper I used to solve in an exam board, like I used to sit and solve in one one hour 30 minutes. Because in the main exam, we will be having uh, also the issue of bubbling and some time also I, I used to give uh, less in the exam mode when I do it as a mock. 
so in that way i used to complete all the previous year questions so this is the first thing which i did second i used to limit my resources for prelims uh, though many people say that one has to have a very broad uh, uh, horizon of knowledge on various things uh, to clearing prelims because anything and everything can be asked uh, i also believe it is also very important to stick to basics so i chatted out all the minimum basic subjects which one should do that is the polity history in which history which includes both modern as well as art and culture then economy environment again high emphasis on environment because it is common for both uh, civil service as well as forest service then science and technology questions then miscellaneous questions which includes the uh, current affairs international relations related questions and any other uh, conventions which are going on on the particular time so in this way i used to divide in six broad pillars and for every pillar i used to have the minimum resources for example polity my class notes plus lakshmikant then when it comes to history again my class notes plus some ncert which i referred then when it comes to environment uh, my class notes which includes uh, mrunal sir's handout plus the current affairs then again science and technology questions the pre previous year questions plus ongoing trends in science and technology like uh, internet of things artificial intelligence blockchain all these things so and environment again class notes plus extensive use of uh, google and internet surfing uh, to have uh, frequently repeated questions on fingertips like protected areas uh, various conventions which are uh, happening and the conference of uh, parties uh, cop which we see every year so what are the major uh, changes uh, which are happening at international level so these things i used to keep a track using internet so in this way i used to keep the six pillars but the basics of all the six pillars i used to have some limited resources be it a class notes or some, or some textbook uh, with this i used to cover my second point like first along the pyq guidance i used to cover my basics of all the subjects having limited content but revising the multiple times so that i would i always used to be very thorough with my basics so out of the 100 questions the 35 to 40 questions which you should directly come from basics i hardly used to miss any so in most of the times i used to have 95% plus accuracy in these questions and post this comes the third point that is a current affairs uh, so in the prelims journey over the years i have realized sometimes that current affairs is too much over hyped uh, especially by some of the coaching institutes uh, but it is also something which one can't neglect so i used to do a selective approach so i used to uh, use the knowledge which i gained from the previous year questions in choosing those current affairs which are very important so whenever i go through the index of any given magazine for example if i am going through the science and tech magazine of an uh, any particular uh, coaching institute and there are various uh, satellites uh, news of satellites which are launched by the isro and some satellites launched by nasa some launched by the other space agencies i used to see all those satellites which are very important commercially and which are also important for a common man and is there any combined initiative by isro or nasa or isro or some other special agency uh, and i used to skip all those uh, launches which are specifically launched by european space agency only for their purposes because i don't think upsc finds it so important to frame a question out of 100 questions on some random uh, launch which is done by some other space agency so in this way i used to use my knowledge of previous year questions and uh, select current affairs and reduce the load of current affairs uh, from these magazines and i used to be selective reading so in this way i used to focus on these three things again and again i used to revise a lot rather than reading uh, new new things uh, every time so your main focus has been last 30 years of uh, prelims exam upsc exam and as you told the last time also last 3 4 years of other upsc exams yes, like capf yes, cds also used to solve yes. so uh, has solving the capf and cds papers current the upsc of last few years has helped you in printing the questions yes sir Uh, i definitely feel it has helped me a lot especially uh, i used to focus on those areas in which i am not very comfortable with for example i am not comfortable with the art and culture question from ancient and medieval history and if one goes through the papers of cds capf and nda they would realize that questions are asked a uh, little bit more factual and uh, in depth questions are asked in these especially from history questions and uh, i used to go through these questions and i used to mark them up in areas where i can't remember so i used to literally wrote learn some things and sometimes questions there to get repeated for example in 2019 there was a question on uh, ranya ashoka sculpture uh, the location where it, it was found uh, and the answer i think was kanaganhalli 
and this question was directly picked up from 2014 CDS paper. I am not saying that exactly the same questions will get again repeated, but uh, what I feel is the same set of professors will be preparing common set of general knowledge questions or general studies questions. So I think solving those questions will give me confidence and also the elimination techniques which many people say in civil services exam. I feel the same techniques can equally uh, be applied in CDS and CAPF examinations. Okay. So those solving those again help me in reinstating my elimination techniques or some common uh, conclusions which I used to come about the UPSC mindset. Okay. So friends as Ramana, Ramana said, you know uh, many people generally solve only last 5 to 10 years of UPSC prince questions. But he has solved 30 years of questions that actually made him understand the pattern of the, the mindset of the people who make the questions for UPSC. Also as I said very clearly, uh, I want to repeat what I once again. His resources were limited, only the class notes that he made. Uh, along with that, for history, only you know the basic NCRTs of school, 6,000 NCRTs, economy, only Gunal Sars notes, and quality, only Lakshmi Kant. You see, environment, self reading of Shankar book, like that, only limited material he has got. But he revised this so many times, and all the students have almost same material, but still is able to get 120 consecutively in the sense of revision and solving previous questions, understanding the pattern of the questions. The unique thing that he has done, which generally nobody does, unique thing is, he even solved the CDS, CAPF questions because as I said just now, some of the questions are actually repeated. And coming to the current affairs, he is telling that his focus is mostly on the static than current affairs. Uh, because most of you know, these days are preparing much of the time, spending more time on the current affairs. But you spent on the static part. And current affairs also, you read the newspaper and any one magazine. Yes. Okay. Okay, and coming to the geography. Uh, sir, when it comes to geography, uh, there also I realized that over the years, UPSC is not focusing more on static geography. So though it, though the knowledge of static geography is very important because uh, it's asked not just in prelims but also in mains. Uh, when it comes to prelims question specifically, one has to be very strong with maps and current affairs and uh, various uh, places which are in news, especially the places not just in India but all across the world. Because over the years one can see the questions like this year they asked about bordering countries of Afghanistan and uh, last year they were asking the countries which were uh, members of G20. Yeah. So whenever I used to follow newspapers, I used to have rough pictorial memory of uh, what countries are in news and what are their bordering countries. I used to again visualize uh, like I am visiting so and so country, so what neighbors who, uh, neighboring countries I can visit when I go to X or Y country. So in this way over the years the accumulated knowledge of map pointing uh, the other geographical features and geographical phenomena like volcanoes that are happening or earthquakes that are happening, this uh, pictorial memory again helped me instead of uh, just the bookish knowledge. So the basic source which I used was the 11th class NCRT, the two NCRTs which are there, one of uh, world geography and one is of Indian geography. That I used to repeat uh, when I used to revise for prelims every year. Uh, I never, I, I mean I revised human geography very less because I feel uh, questions from human geography are very uh, rarely asked in prelims. So I usually repeated the 11th class geography and my class notes of geography. And more than this, I used to see the map pointing from current affairs point of view. Okay. See, considering science and technology, science and technology previously questions are mostly from the uh, current affairs point of view. But, yes. but these days, science and technology, some of the questions are very conventional questions, which can be solved only when you have some background knowledge on the topic. So what have you done? for science and technology in the last three years, other than current affairs, have you really focused much on that? Uh, sir, personally, I haven't focused much because being an engineer, I was comfortable with some of the technologies. But if, if any other aspirant comes and asks me to this question, I would say it is not so difficult as uh, one thinks, especially if some medicine background or some person from law background is coming and giving the paper. Science and technology questions can be dealt with if he has a little bit inquisitiveness and curiosity to learn what is happening in and around oneself. For example, the questions are not always very difficult. Uh, there was a question I think in 2019 where the UPSC asked about virtual reality and augmented reality. So there UPSC was just trying to know uh, whether the person knows the basic difference between what VR and AR is. So they just interchange, they were interchanging the options. Uh, they were interchanging VR for AR and AR for VR. So if one has basic inquisitiveness of knowing what a technology means, uh, what a cryptocurrency means, what blockchain means, that basic uh, knowledge also sometimes suffi will suffice 
to get at least 50 percent of the science and tech questions correct and uh, also as you mentioned though it is not very static subject it is always uh, a current related topic but i also feel here also the pvqs also helped me for example in 2020 there was a question on evolved lisa where the uh, explanation gave uh, where in the question was giving explanation of some particular constellation and various satellites arranged in one particular manner and it was asking what this refers to and I got it correct that it was evolved Lisa because it was a previous year question. The same question was asked in a different form three years back. So in the same way uh, technologies where India is uh, directly involved in especially nuclear technologies for example there is this tokamak which is uh, being in work and India is also active member in it and this uh, re question related to this tokamak has been asked in UPSC in one or other way three times in the last uh, 20 years from the year 2000 to 2020 it, it, it was asked three times. Right. So I feel these technologies which India is involved in and uh, technologies which are important from UPSC mindset for example technologies of nuclear importance or technologies or research which India is doing in Arctic and Antarctic and focusing on some of the technologies. Uh, which are like very emerging, IOT, AR, VR, knowing the basics of it, not in-depth knowledge and having thorough knowledge of the PYQs of uh, space related technologies like what ISRO is doing, what, what is Gaganyaan, uh, what is NAVIC, knowing the basics of it and knowing Evolve LISA and some projects which India, uh, ISRO and NASA are combinedly doing or uh, ISRO and JAXA are combinedly doing. So having these basic things in hand and doing selective reading because one one once when one do the PYQs one will have the basic understanding of what the UPSC things are important uh, whether this particular topic is is it important for UPSC or not any technology which helps common man uh, is very important according to UPSC so if one has this basic inquisitiveness and knows even a little bit about it he can easily eliminate the options and arrive at the correct answer okay okay see actually these days many aspirants even if they do not know the answer, there are two ways of answering it. One is logically understanding what may be the wrong answer, eliminating them. Other thing is some students are following something called as cheat codes, you might have heard that. For example, science and technology means mostly all the above is the answer. If the years are given, mostly they are wrong. Ministries mostly correct, some kind of, some things like this. So what is your opinion on that? Do you, uh, have you followed anything like that in, in your point of view? Is UPS really has this kind of uh, pattern of eliminating? Uh, yes sir. When I, when I have heard all these uh, cheat codes in my second and third attempt, uh, I personally, when I was solving all the previous year questions and especially the 2011 to 2020 papers, when I solved them offline by myself in exam mode, I realized that many of these cheat codes are too overrated and uh, too dangerous to rely upon them uh, completely. Because, because of them I know many people who have lost their prelims and lost their attempts and lost their uh, career opportunities in one way. Uh, but the point is uh, they will never get a chance to speak before uh, Cameron to go before large number of audience. So that is why the young aspirants will not know what the risks are when one follows these techniques blindly. It is only the successful candidates uh, who will say if it, it, if it has worked for him or her, they will say that this is working and uh, people will start bl again blindly following them. But I would caution every young aspirant to take all these suggestions with a pinch of salt. Uh, in my particular case, I have solved all these uh, papers and I have tried to see whether these techniques are really working or not. And I have realized there is no such technique which will work for 100% uh, of hundred percent of the time. For example, if even if that particular, if I take an example, the technique that if a number is given, it is the statement is wrong. This is so false. Uh, that if you apply this for uh, various questions which one asks from 2011 to 2020 he will find that more than 50 percent of the time he'll get wrong option and this one can also see when runal sir uh, solves the paper and uploads it on, on his website that this technique is completely wrong so but one can uh, if, if one solves the paper and analyzes and try to think from the examiner uh, mindset he he or she can find a logic for example this number i if you allow me i would like tell this number example in a little bit depth. So I understood that the examiner is trying to put an option and he, if he wants to make the option wrong, it is very easy for him to tweak the number and make it wrong. So this is how the logic that when a number is uh, given it is wrong uh, types uh, trick is coming up. But I feel if let us say in a statement there are two or three variables. Uh, for example, uh, in one year the, there was a question that 
under uh, public distribution system or uh, for people who are uh, pregnant mothers so much calories of food is given so such kind of option was there i think in the 2019 exam so in that particular option uh, where a particular pregnant woman is given so ma- so many calories of x y z calories of food so there is nothing else except the number so okay the pregnant woman is being given food and x calories is given so there is nothing where examiner can make the option wrong except the number so in such cases that trick will work because there is no other variable but if there is some other variable let us say uh, a house be, will be registered on the male member or the female member of the family and so on so amount will be given so here there are two variables on the whose name the house is being registered and the amount uh, which can be varied so it is not that examiner will definitely again vary the number so it it boils down to thinking from the examiner mindset so whenever someone is telling you one technique to follow in prelims i think it is very important to think as a examiner so if you are going to set a question and you are going to set that option will you be uh, finding it easy to change the number or will you be finding it easy to change something else so think from that point of view and come to your own conclusion and solving the last 10 years papers will make you realize that these tricks uh, will work only in specific conditions and in some conditions this trick won't work so this number logic i found sometimes it will work for example there was a question where they gave the distance of uh, uh, geostationary orbit from the earth so in that there was nothing ex- nothing else except the number the distance uh, x y z kilometer except that there was nothing else so upsc changed that x y z instead of kilometer they gave miles so they changed that option so there the trick worked but it is not that it will work everywhere so it depends uh, from from like the examiner mindset what he is trying to solve and the specific trick way which you were earlier mentioning that in science and technology questions people usually prefer all of the above all of the there also uh, i think in uh, i don't remember the year exactly it was 2012 or 2013 where upsc almost in 90% of the science and technology questions the answer was not all of these it was something else in 90% of the questions if the uh, the exam the uh, candidate will get the wrong answer if he chooses all of this so this I, then i realized okay there is no hard and fast rule for upsc there is no hard and fast rule for the examiner so he can set anything he can break the rules he can make the rules so there is no one particular rule or law which one can follow so these elimination techniques one has to evolve by his own one has to solve the questions he has to get his own uh, knack of solving them and finally he has to see what possibly the ways which upsc examiner is trying to push you in uh, in a trap if he is putting you in a trap what ways he can put you in a trap and uh, no trick or technique will work if you have zero knowledge believe me i have uh, come across all the five attempts and in the first attempt when i have very limited knowledge uh, the techniques or the tricks miserably failed me but right now though uh, i haven't revised current affairs much the same techniques will help me in getting more marks because right now my static knowledge is more than what i used to have in the first attempt so that static knowledge is very very crucial even for applying the techniques it is not like you have zero knowledge and you can apply techniques that i think is not true sir yeah. see that's the reason why i ask this question is because i observe many students are blindly following some cheat cheat codes which are even mentioned in some uh, websites or youtube uh, videos also and most of them have failed actually because of following cheat codes blindly like how ramana said just now cheat codes you cannot follow as it is only when you saw last 20 years upsc papers automatically understand the mindset of upsc based on that you can guess some of the answers which you do not really know about so that's how you have to approach the exam and see ramana for example in the last three years generally or hard questions let us say you know some 40 40 questions you know but do you follow any rule that i have to attempt 90 questions or 85 do you have anything in mind like this to to score 120 that you have scored in the last two years uh yes sir especially if one is aiming for indian forest service there is no other option for him or her but to get and uh, reach the mark of 120 so in that case one can't just stop at 55 or 60 or 70 or 75 because mm-hmm. if one is attempt 70 then their accuracy ratio has to be very high and if one is not very sure about their accuracy ratio it is safer to attempt more but the attempt has to be mindful it should not be like uh, reckless attempt if one has zero knowledge let us say about a particular question where he has no knowledge of the question neither the question nor the options then it is very difficult and it's also meaningless 
to get into the trap and uh, getting negative marks instead if he can find some question where he can eliminate one option or at least uh, two options if it is possible then one can take the risk of uh, going for guess in the 50-50 case because if he is at least guessing in three or four questions there is high chance that at least one question will be correct so even if you get one correct and three wrong the net is zero so the person will not lose anything but this guess can only be taken if one reaches the 50-50 stage so in my particular case I used to attempt uh, 85 plus in, uh, in the last three years because I was very clear with the amount of static knowledge and the contemporary affairs which one has accumulated over the years it is not very difficult to reach the 80-85 mark questions mark but, but post that uh, it also depends upon the difficulty of the paper for example in 2021 all of a sudden UPSC asked uh, sports related current affairs which I think many were caught off guard with even I was surprised uh, to answer some questions related to Olympics and uh, there was some question on some uh, uh, sports related award so I was completely unaware of that question so and I was not able to get any logic to eliminate options so I safely uh, left that question unattended. So in that case, it dip, it, uh, one has to be uh, reaching that minimum mark of 80 or 85 questions uh, based upon one's own accuracy. Because I personally know my accuracy has certain limits. If I attempt 10 questions by guesswork, uh, I am sure that I will get six, 6 correct. So that is my accuracy. If, so one has to know one's own accuracy based on that he should attempt some minimum number of questions. Post that, it depends upon the difficulty of the paper. Okay. on that exam day. Okay. See, for example, out of four options, if two are, if you are able to eliminate two, among the two, you can choose, means you will go for a guess. But let us say, out of four options, you are able to eliminate only one. Generally, do you go for a guess out of remaining three or do you generally leave it? What is your way of doing? Yes, sir. Uh, so that, that actually frequently happens. In every year paper, and at, at least I used to have five to ten questions. Uh, varying uh, based upon the difficulty where I was able to confidently eliminate one option especially in this year prelims where the questions were of different kind there was one pair two pair three pair and four pair type of questions were asked so in all the question most of the questions I was able to eliminate one option for sure uh, but in the rest three options it was very difficult for me uh, to take a guess so in these questions I mostly prefer not to take a guess uh, unless and until if I am forced to attempt the minimum number of questions like if I am unable to reach the 70 question mark or 75 question mark, then I would take some logical guess. After eliminating one option, I would see if I can find any more, anything more. Or sometimes the intuition or hunch feel will say, okay, this might be the probable answer. So in such questions, I would go. But in such questions, I would, I would not be very selective. For example, if I have three questions in that particular set, uh, that I am able to eliminate only one option and left with three options. In that manner, I have three questions. And I would not do like I attempt one, I will leave two. If I attempt, I attempt all the three. Okay. Because then uh, the safe option will be there for me. That even one, if one would get correct, I would be in ending on a positive side. Okay. So okay. I would choose it that way. But if I am already happy enough with the number of attempts, uh, questions I attempted, I would happily leave those questions. Okay. Friends, the reason why I am asking these many questions for glimpse is because some students even after clearing the examination, the civil examination with a reasonably good rank, if they are writing the civil exam again, still they are failing in the prelims, that we have observed in the last few yes. years. So in this scenario, most of the students have good knowledge, they have read all the basic uh, child textbooks, everything, but still the approach is wrong. That's why as Ramakant Reddy has repeatedly, consistently scored more in the prelims to clear the IFS uh, cutoff, Indian Forces cutoff, Definitely, you have to learn something from his strategy, from his approach to prelims. And one more thing, Ramana. Generally, uh, there is I mean, some students solve all hard questions at single go. Some in the first round solve what they know very well. In second round, uh, where they can eliminate two options. Third round, what's your your way of going about it? Do you follow it rounds or single stage finish it? Yes, sir. Uh, even here. Uh, I Definitely, I would not suggest any one particular way, way, way for any aspirant because it all depends upon one's own natural way of solving questions. In my particular case, I used to solve the entire paper, at least the, I used to see all the 100 questions in 1 hour 10 minutes or so. And uh, I, after that 1 hour 10 minute mark or 1 hour 15 minute mark, I used to bubble all the questions which I have attempted till that point. After that 1 hour 20 minutes, from there I will start again going back to the questions which I left. So usually those questions will be the 50-50 type of questions where I have marked two options and uh, I have to choose one of them. 
so and by the time i used to complete all the 50 50 type of questions i used to reach 1 or 40 minutes so i used to left with 20 minutes and some 30 questions or so where in some questions i had eliminated one option in some questions i had no clue so there i used to try to see if i can eliminate one more option and go for 50 50 and then take a guess or and attempt the question and in completely uh, questions which i were which i was completely unaware of i used to see is there any linkage why the examiner is asking this particular question for example sometimes even if you don't have any knowledge of the question but if you can remotely relate it to something you can get the answer for example uh, in 2021 there was uh, some question triclosan uh, question on triclosan where the question asked triclosan is used in which of the following and uh, there were four options in the first uh, guess i was like completely unaware of what the answer is but when i was uh, seeing the question and again and again and the, when the time was nearing i somehow read that in triclosan there is closon which is which i thought it is chlorine so chlorine is something which one can use in bleaching or cleaning operation so there was option of toiletries so i immediately went for toiletries so sometimes one one see the question for one or two times and be open and open uh, enough to think it broadly uh, breaking the word etymologically especially when in one liner questions one can try to break the word etymologically and try to find is there anything uh, which one can derive from the name so that will help you in getting sometimes to the right answer even if you are not 100% sure enough if your hunch says that you can go for it you can go for it uh, but provided you have the st- static knowledge and you are, if you are sure that chlorine is used for bleaching purposes so if one doesn't have the knowledge of chlorine is used for these purposes then it is very difficult to guess this can if you are open minded you can use your common sense yes sir so they able to use common sense in some of the questions yes sir okay so ramna enough of the prelims now because actually prelims has become dicey these days yes. that's why i have spent some uh, so much time on prelims yes. now coming to the mains point of view see upsc mains as well as forest service mains has got general studies almost same general studies yes. though the number of mocks is different the pattern is different the rules are almost same have you observed any difference in preparation for general studies leave the english and optionals general studies for civil services and forest yes. services mains yes sir Uh, when it first when it comes to the pattern of the exam in forest service there is uh, the paper is called general knowledge in though the in civil services uh, the upsc calls it general studies in forest service it is called as general knowledge and the paper is for 300 marks out of the total uh, 1400 marks which are there for forest service mains 300 marks are comprised by the general knowledge paper and in that in a 3 hours duration one has to attempt 24 questions so it is four questions more than what uh, one attempts in general studies paper yes. so and there are uh, two different type of questions one 10 marker questions another 15 marker questions and there are six different sections and in each section there are four questions so there are six into four 24 questions so on the first one section is for history questions one is for polity one is for economy and the rest or uh, three sections consists of questions from environment geography and science and technology so th- those three sections are relatively more tougher for any aspirant uh, rather than when compared with the other three traditional sections like history polity and economy so next coming to the pattern of the questions the uh, history questions in general knowledge paper are very direct in nature when compared with civil services overall the gk questions are more straight forward so they are less analytical and more technical so for example the questions in history are asked like uh, reasons for uh, decline of harappan civilization or uh, how was the administration under vijayanagara kingdom so the questions are more direct in nature and there is very uh, less analytical type of questions in history same goes with polity and economy the questions are more or less uh, straight forward but one can compare them with the civil services standard general studies paper so these three sections are relatively easy and one can do with very limited preparation just one second going through the basics is sufficient but when it comes to the section number 4 5 6 which has questions from geography environment as well as science and technology it is relatively very difficult for a person uh, because very in depth questions and very uh, technologically very uh, narrow questions are asked in these areas so sometimes aspirants are faced with a situation where they are completely uh, unaware of a topic very specific very specific questions like 3 uh, years back i think in 2017 or 2018 they asked what is squid s q u i d in uh, computer science background and medical background it's not some squid animal so uh, i was when i was solving the pvqs again i was having no knowledge of it and uh, even they asked uh, krishnal uh, 
technologies like uh, liquid crystals how it works so the questions are very direct for example in my first uh, forest service mains when i gave they asked the minimum number of satellites which which are required for effective functioning of a gps so they they are directly asking the minimum number so one has to say the number exactly one can't uh, bluff and beat around the bush so in such way the questions are little bit direct when it comes to the last three sections but uh, focusing on geography and environment especially the current affairs part like uh, when the australian bushfires were in use the question was asked from it and when some other uh, environment related disaster is in use the questions are asked so one can focus on these two environment and geography more seriously on science and tech one can go through the pbqs and also do the uh, science and tech questions which are asked in prelims because sometimes yes prelims science and tech questions are asked because they are in use so one can expect the same question might get repeated in mains also this actually happened uh, when i was giving a first forest service mains so there was a question in prelims on the three parent baby technology so there was also the uh, news about mitochondrial dna and uh, how the three parent baby technology can help in solving some issues faced by this and uh, similar uh, technology based question was asked in the forest service mains also so in this way also used to see the science and technology questions of prelims so as to get some deeper insight into mains possible questions so in that way i tackled my general knowledge paper so i gave two forest service mains in my first forest service mains i was i had very limited time because i was forced to study two new optionals so i got around uh, 110 in gk paper when the highest was around 140 this year uh, i got 145 when the highest was around 160 okay so i think this is selective preparation has helped me in gk okay, okay. and then see coming to the english english in civil service is a compulsory paper this qualifying paper yes sir but in forest service it's scoring yes, and the english paper also plays a major role in the forest service mains examination so have you spent enough time on that how much time have you spent what sources have you followed and how much are you able to score uh so to be very honest uh, yeah it is very important because again the marks are same gk paper and english paper both of them carries 300 marks each uh, so it is very important for a person to give enough time and uh, it is also very scoring paper many people score very well in english and uh, they get through to, to interview stage just because of their english score but for me unfortunately because i had different options in civil services and forest services uh, in my first mains i had very limited time uh to spend on english so i hardly spent two days uh, because i had 35 days cumulatively and uh, out of the 35 i only spent two days on english paper but when i gave the, the forest mains this year the second time i spent nearly four days uh, and i also used the knowledge which i accumulated in the first forest mains attempt so i did again selective uh, reading for english because uh, most of the sections which are asked in english paper are common Uh, with civil services examination just the two more sections are uh, there in forest service specifically one is press writing uh, uh, one is letter writing and one is report writing these are two sections which are additionally there in forest service english paper when compared to civil services uh, so this if one ha- one do the little practice of uh, writing one letter write one letter and one press and then one report writing and for this also there is no need to go run here and there one can use the previous year question papers and make one model uh, letter model uh, report that will suffice along with this i used uh, the toppers uh, videos and uh, get the format of how to write uh, letter writing and report writing uh, as per the upsc requirements after that uh, when it comes to grammar section it is very very important for a person to work upon it in my particular case i am not very uh, strong when it comes to english grammar so i studied a lot for english grammar in that uh, four four days which i have studied english nearly three days i have dedicated solely to the english grammar so i took some of my friends help who were not giving this exam and who were in some software uh, fields so i used to send them la- the last eight years or nine years uh, forest service question papers and civil service english question papers and i asked them to uh, compile yeah, the answers nice. for me for the grammar section so and i directly uh, read them all the questions and answers and sometimes the same things get repeated so there are adjective forms and noun forms which are asked in english which are very easy and if one uh, reads the pre- previous questions and finds answers for those there is high chance that those things get repeated and uh, these are some of the things which one can easily get even from other people who are preparing for ssc or so so this selective preparation i have done for grammar section and uh, i think it have helped me in getting that score of 156 Okay, it's a good score actually. Good yes, score. Sir, the highest was around I think 170, and I got 156. Uh, with uh, the amount of time I gave, and I think uh, it was decently good score. 
so you spend at least reasonable time friends one mistake most students do is as english letter writing process writing some essay basic grammar they feel they can go through it only one or two days before the exam but there's a blunder spend at least four five days give enough time for that go through previous papers because if you score more in english then even if you score it less in optional or general knowledge it will cover up so do not neglect it and now so ramna after finishing this general knowledge and english coming to options see two different options both are not what you have taken the civil examination completely different options and geology and forestry and you have less time after writing the civil mains they have less time so obviously you can take very you can rely on very less number of resources you cannot read more books so for geology what resource have you followed and of course everybody follow the same resource but how effectively followed it what is the strategy in following that resource for geology first let us talk about geology option sure sir uh, so i gave my first forest mains in 2020 sir so at that time uh, i spent i think hardly 6 days for geology because out of the 35 days i gave 2 days for english then again one and a half day for gk some i gave majority of the time to forestry because i felt that was very interesting and very easy to complete and i was carried away with that and geology i couldn't spend because though i tried i was not having any other person or friend who was studying with me and it was completely technical and new optional and i have i had no background from geology so and i haven't enrolled for any course at the time so i uh, just relied on the basic book uh, bangar so i did the basic reading and i went with the civil knowledge of geography where we also study geomorphology to certain extent so in the paper one of geology in forest services which has uh, relatively civil geomorphology portion is there in uh, uh, higher amount yes. so i scored around 108 in the paper one out of 200 which i which i was really shocked and it was a good score in that yes, paper very good score sir and in second paper which is more technical and more geological geology oriented i scored 67 but that also i was very happy because given the limited amount of 6 to 7 days which i studied geology i scored uh, like 108 plus 67 around 175 i scored i was I, i felt very happy and i was very confident that if i get one more opportunity i could convert this it this time so when i got again opportunity in 2021 to give uh, means again the number of days were same i hardly had 35 to 40 days but this time i gave uh, nearly 20 days 20 to 22 days specifically for geology so i along with uh, few other friends we enrolled in a crash course uh, given by planet geology so under the guidance of uh, uh, lawrence sir and mayank sir under in planet geology i uh, enrolled in that course but there also the course the geology as a subject is very vast so it though it is very static it is vast in nature so that optional completing it in 20 days uh, was a hectic task for me so i again out of the 12 sections which are there in geology syllabus i selected 10 sections i left two sections uh, what to those two paleontology uh, paleontology i covered it sir because in civils my option was anthro and i was comfortable in doing okay. paleontology okay. so i left stratigraphy okay. uh, and in paper 1 and in paper 2 i left mining geology okay. so these two sections uh, when i say i left i did them for compulsory questions so i i was prepared from stratigraphy and uh, mining stratigraphy basic previous questions prepared yes sir mining left out yes sir i prepared the basic previous year questions and i was confident to attempt the eight marker questions which are compulsory in nature but when it comes to choice questions i was more comfortable in choosing the other questions so in that way i prepared 10 units uh, very thoroughly and uh, i do because of the paucity of time i haven't written any tests and i haven't written any model answers for pyqs but i was constantly checking the previous year questions what all questions are being asked what could be the probable uh, structure of the answer what diagrams can i include so in that way i was uh, making i was watching the videos of uh, in the crash course i was making my own handwritten notes and i was also making some diagrams from here and there so that i could induce them, i could implement them in uh, main answer and i could could score more marks so in this way i did selective uh, reading in geology this time okay okay so actually finishing geology in just in 20 days is like a very difficult task i think you you basically kept yourself only to very important areas yes, and the source was limited sources only one book and only one particular coaching videos yes, now coming to forestry manikandan right manikandan yes, is manikandan okay. so friends actually for forest everybody it's the same book on manikandan however you can see you know huge difference in the scores everybody gets the same amount of time everybody has same book in their hand however the mocks they get are quite different so what made you score more in forestry you use the same book and limited time yes, what was the strategy for it 
uh, again uh, here when i when i gave my first forest mains uh, i scored around 104 in paper 1 and uh, 104 in paper 2 and 89 in paper 1 so which was around nearly 89, 89 sir. Uh, so which was around 190 marks nearly so and uh, because of the time i gave i was okay with it but i expected a little bit more uh, it was in the second mains i realized what went wrong in the first mains because with the same amount of preparation i had friends who scored 220 also so there i felt it was more about presentation when it comes to forestry paper because as you mentioned everyone reads the same manikandan book or uh, even now it is some coaching institutes also started uh, their own handwritten notes but yeah major source uh, is picked in one or other way from manikandan some also follow ls khanna and other uh, in depth books but uh, manikandan will be su uh, sufficient and uh, more than that one has to have the natural interest in presenting the answers well so that's what i learned in my second attempt so from the seniors and who scored good marks in the my first during my first mains i talked to them and i have realized that they used to draw more number of diagrams and write less content because it is easy to pictorially represent what one is trying to mention for example if the question is on mangroves they were very uh, uh, quickly drawing the diagrams of mangrove trees and if they if it is on specifically some nursery they are uh, drawing uh, rough outlay of a nursery so in that way they were uh, pictorially mentioning things drawing things and secondly they were mentioning scientific names yes. which are very very important in my first attempt because of the less time though i have read the scientific names it became very difficult for me to uh, remember and reproduce in the exam but in my second means i was very comfortable with the scientific names i was uh, speaking them just like my normal day uh, terminologies mm -hmm. So I put lot of effort in remembering them and using them in my day to day use and this made me uh, very fluent in writing these scientific names in the main paper. So these two things, the presentation by way of diagrams and uh, writing scientific names in a proper manner like you have to write the scientific name, first letter uh, in the first word the first letter has to be capital, the second word the first letter has to be small and one has to underline it, underline is uh, must when one, write, one writes scientific name. So these two things I have uh, made sure that I, I would do it this time and I got good marks in the, this year forestry paper compared to my first attempt. Okay, so friends, just like Ramana also, Ramana, you also make a list of uh, technical words, scientific names for different species and try to use them in the exam as well as, as he said, both in geology also, geology and forestry, this time you have drawn more diagrams yes. which you think helped you, yes. uh, made you present the answer better. Okay, now see, that's all about general knowledge, English and the options, now come to interview. So interview of forest surveys has more technical questions. So in your interview, can you briefly tell on what lines the interview went on? Yes, yes sir. Uh, as you mentioned, the tech, the interviews, though both are conducted by the same uh, UPSC members as the chairman or chairpersons, uh, they are slightly different. Firstly, when it comes to marks, they are different. UPSC interviews for 275 marks, while forest is uh, for 300 marks. And out of 1700, 300 is a huge number. Uh, and uh, the number of people sitting in the board is also different. In UPSC, there will be one chairperson and uh, four other members. But in, when it comes to forest service interview, there will be one chairperson and uh, three uh, panel members. So one person is less in forest service interview. And so the duration of the interview will also be accordingly a little bit on a lesser side when compared with the civil service interview. But uh, when it comes to the content of what happens in the interview, in civil service interview, uh, though the interview might uh, usually start with uh, one uh, detailed application form, the DAF, which one calls, it can go in any direction. It can the questions would, could be on current affairs, the, it could be on their optionals, on their background, on their uh, work experience, or some other thing. In forest service, the interviews it, they mostly revolved uh, around the technical aspects of the forest and environment. So even in my case, it was the same. So my interview. Uh, I got uh, Satyavati ma'am board on the day of interview. Ma'am uh, started with uh, asking questions linked with the environment along with my work location. I used to work in Daikin air conditioners before I entered this preparation. So ma'am started with asking questions uh, of how Japanese people worship uh, nature and uh, how is it different from how Indians worship. Uh, can we learn anything from Japanese or can Japanese learn anything from India? So these were the first questions which ma'am asked me. Uh, in my forest service interview. After that, the next immediate question she asked me was about why forest service? You are also giving civil services interview and uh, what is that you are, uh, we should select you for forest services in particular. So this was the second follow-up question and uh, 
when i gave the answer and ma'am was convinced enough and uh, she i think uh, after this she passed on to the next member these two questions itself uh, went up went nearly for 8 minutes they, there were some cross questions in between and uh, she passed on to the next member and uh, one the second member he started asking the technical questions starting with my questions on my hobby of uh, playing cricket so the member asked about what an lbw is what what is it full form what is it why is it needed in cricket and how is it decided uh, how is a person adjudged lbw so after this he went on to uh, bring about uh, some technical questions like he asked me about the importance of grassland ecosystem are we preserving it enough so he asked me uh, that forest department should focus more on grasslands which it is not doing now so the question he posed me was in some negative tone then uh, i uh, answered this question by saying to sir that introduction of cheetah in india the one of the main objective of introducing cheetah is to protect and promote grassland ecosystem because it's a top predator of grasslands so when i answered this the sir was convinced enough and uh, he then gave me some further cross questions and uh, i answered them so mo- mostly he, the questions revolved around the grassland ecosystems and uh, importance of it then the questions then went on to the third member the third member uh, started uh, i i think the member was some from technical background especially mechanical engineering background so he was more perplexed that why i didn't choose mechanical engineering because i being a graduate from that subject uh, from iit delhi he was more interested why you chose uh, geology so then i answered uh, that particular question saying that in civil services i chose some other optional instead of mechanical because i was more interested in knowing culture so i chose anthropology in the same way when i was going through the syllabus of different optionals in forestry and uh, for indian forest service i came across that kadappa which is my hometown has some spe- specific geological significance and that intrigued me and i never had uh, got a chance uh, to read geology so because of this interest i went through the syllabus and i found it interesting and i chose the optional this is what i said to the panel member on that day and so he then the immediate question was he was more interested to know acha tell me what is that geological significance of kadappa why is it important what is this kadappa rock how is it different from other type of rocks so that's how the my interview got diverted to geology then he asked me the importance of geology in forest so how geology defines a forest uh, from there i connected it with the red sanders issue so then he asked me about red sanders issue uh, why they are grown in why they grow in only one particular region so what is the issue now uh, are making movies over this red sanders will it help in uh, reducing the smuggling or it will it help in pr- promoting the smuggling so after that he asked about uh, iocn and various uh, uh, threatened species status which it gives like critically endangered endangered then uh, the questions were on how would you as a forest uh, dfo how would you protect and promote a critical endangered species be it an animal or plant how would you do that he asked me the steps or uh, w- what measures would i take so these were the technical questions asked by the third member and the final member he asked me two questions uh, again from the technical background like he asked me uh, how would you protect a environment uh, from getting polluted and he gave me a situation test that should government bring in a law uh, to change a custom uh, which inherently protects the environment uh, because he was mentioning to hindu way of life which worships nature Uh, so he was asking is is it is there any need for government to bring in a law to tell uh, indian citizens to do in this way or that way so he was giving me a situation test and i answered it and there were some follow up questions again in this But overall the interview i feel went more on technical grounds and there were very less uh, areas where they asked uh, some international issue current affairs or crisis that is happening in sri lanka or ukraine so there were no such questions in my forest service interviews actually uh, ramana when he was doing interviews in our academy also he was very articulative and generally as you observed in this interview also for any question that you ask he will try to answer in multiple points that is honest basically i think that helped him score very high marks he has got 210 marks out of 300 in the forest service interview which is one of the highest scores generally given in the forest service interview and so also ramana one more thing even in the mock interviews we gave from interview to interview there was some difference you were able to pick up so what kind of homework have you done in your home or room what kind of homework have you done to improve your uh, you know presentation skills in interview yes sir uh, so when i started uh, interview because this was the first time when i got 
Uh, three opportunities to give interviews at three different locations. Yeah, civil service, forest service, and, st- and uh, state. Service. He also cleared Andhra Pradesh State Public Service Commission Group One exam. He cleared, and he is right now selected as deputy collector in Andhra Pradesh. So he has done UPSC civil interview, forest interview, and Group One interview also. Yeah. So this time I got the three different opportunities. So and I also got two months time during my civil preparation. So I was. Uh, more interested in evolving, developing myself uh, as a good personality before the interview board. So I made a uh, lot of changes uh, right from the day one. For example, uh, at the start, I used to read a lot, learn a lot. I used to accumulate knowledge. But after a point, when I gave my first mock interview, I realized that uh, it is okay. It is very important to have knowledge, but it is also the way you present uh, to the chairperson speaks a lot about your personality. So uh, in the start, I used to give very lengthy explanations, lengthy answers, uh, which many uh, mock interview panel members also pointed me that you could be more crisp while answering the questions, and you could also be relatively slow while answering a question because at the end of the day, you will be talking and having a conversation with uh, people who are retired or who are of, uh, who are nearing their retirement. So it is uh, good if you can speak a little bit slow and be to the point and very crisp in nature while answering the questions. So these are the two important suggestions which I started uh, trying to putting in my interview preparation after giving my mock interviews. And also when I gave a mock interview with you uh, and you also suggested me to do mirror practice a lot because that pra- and I, I have uh, did it and that practice helped me uh, to evolve into a good personality because my facial expressions while delivering the answer are also very important. So this I have realized because I had uh, some peculiar expressions for some questions. I have realized when I watched that my mock interview, when I watched that video by myself, I realized, okay, these particular questions, like if there is some difficult question or if the panel member is pushing me into some uncomfortable zone, uh, my facial expressions are changing. So this I have realized and I did mirror practice and. Uh, I made sure that even if I enter into some uncomfortable zone, my facial expression should be calm and composed. I should not get tense, I should not get anxious, or even if some question comes into my comfort zone, I should not be over enthusiastic. So this I learned by mirror practice. So these are three things uh, over the period of the two months I have uh, uh, made sure that I would be present myself with whatever knowledge I go, I would be present uh, presenting that knowledge in a better manner. In a, a and come out as a better personality. So this, I think, has helped me uh, both in forest service interview as well as uh, the state services interview. Okay. See, Dr. Ramakant, even before uh, the rules are declared, even before he has gone for IFS interview, when we were talking, he was always calm, composed. He has, he has the spirit of just going and giving whatever he can give his best, the song. Means he does not focus much on the rules. That's what I observed in him. And I think it's a good quality that you can develop. Only that quality can keep you going for you know this three to four years of uh, journey in the civil service examination. So Ramon Gandhi, wishing you a great career, wishing you a great career in whichever service you take. Finally, because you have got two services, whichever you take, I, I hope you will uh, have a great life. Thank you, sir. All Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations again. Thank you, sir. Yeah.